Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm Michelle and today I want to talk to you about math. I think math and homeschool is a subject that for a lot of us brings a lot of anxiety, maybe some fear, because honestly it's a subject where we probably feel pretty ill-equipped to teach based on our own previous math experience growing up. And on top of that, math now is taught probably a lot differently than perhaps we were taught in school, so it can be difficult to convey the new concepts to our children. So obviously I'm gonna be sharing my thoughts on math, kind of how we've evolved in our math journey from choosing different curriculum and why things have worked and why some things haven't worked. And obviously these are my opinions. Uh, there might be some curriculum I mentioned that works absolutely wonderfully for your family and that's great. I think it's definitely an individual thing. Each family has you know things that work great for them and then don't. I'm not here to tell you what's going to work and what's not going to work, but I'm here to share the journey because I think that story is helpful. So if you're new here, I have a almost nine-year-old daughter and a five-year-old daughter that we're homeschooling currently. Now for my oldest, we have always, she was in public school from kindergarten to second grade and then she's homeschooling this past year for third grade. We have always done some type of gap schooling at home, which means even when she was in the public school system, I would work with her because there was often pretty substantial knowledge gaps that she would have that I would kind of have to <laughs> fill before she moved on. So she has used homeschool math curriculum from the beginning. And that's kind of where I want to start my journey here. So back when my daughter was in kindergarten is when they first came out with the good and beautiful Math. And now I'm going to be talking about the original Good and Beautiful Math. I think they definitely changed it. I don't know how different the curriculum is in itself. I know they changed the math boxes and they simplified it so it wasn't so many components and all those things. But I assume the main math probably hasn't changed a lot. So we tried kindergarten math when my daughter was about to enter kindergarten. And I would say even back then, I didn't think it was a great program. And I've tried a lot of the good and beautiful options. I've tried their science, I've tried their language arts, and I just, I'm not a fan of the good and beautiful. And I think they do a wonderful job at portraying their curriculum very well. I think it's very graphically pleasing. I think it has that very classical look to it, the pictures and all that. like. They get an A for designing it extremely well for the eyes. It's very pleasing to the eyes and it's very pleasing for children to look at. I think that the good and beautiful is so popular because <laughs> it's a little bit of Christian but not enough to be offensive to most people. I think it's popular because it's easy to teach. I think it's easy to teach because it's of for me and my family, it's very surface level information. Now, when my daughter attended public school, it was actually pretty similar to the concepts that would learn it here, except it was just presented in a prettier way. But again, they didn't go really deep into conceptual, conceptual thinking or number sense. Like to me, and I've tried different levels of it. We tried K, we tried second grade right third grade so I feel like and again this is the older curriculum but I feel like I have a good sense of what it was and it just was very it didn't go deep enough it didn't provide that number sense for my child but did it work when she was in public school absolutely all the concepts she learned in here is something they would cover in public school in a very similar way to be completely honest so to me this is like a public school curriculum with a Christian twist on it and it looks pretty. So it did not work well for us. She finished all of K, I think we tried a little bit of first grade. And then when they revamped their curriculum, that's when I actually picked up the other boxes thinking, okay, we'll continue our gap schooling because I think as a supplement, it worked wonderful to have her be able to go through and do some of the work. And one thing that bothers me too, and I'll get into more of this later, is that starting I think in like fourth grade, it becomes very independent, as in the child, it's child-led through online videos and things like that. 
and that just is not a good fit for us. So this was definitely a fail. I didn't even attempt it with my five-year-old because it wasn't enough. It was just, I think people like it because it's easy, because it's not requiring you to go to that deep, deeper level of thinking to be able to understand conceptual math. So that was a fail. One thing I will say though, with the three and four box, now again, this is the old one, this was um, clearanced out for $10. This, I do think it was worth it. It is pretty much just the activity book and the games and stuff. So we are currently doing multiplication and division. And this, I will say, was worth it. It came with, for $10, it came with all these different math games that we can do. And this is something we actually still utilize. So I will say that part, I do like. I think it is useful, but the actual curriculum itself, no, not for us. So moving on from that, oh, let's see if I can grab it. For my youngest, we moved on to this, and I have a full review on this that I will link up above, but this was really great. It provided that really good foundation, that conceptual math, really good number sense. It was very hands-on, and it was very short and sweet. It's a very gentle approach. This is definitely what I would start out with math, and when my youngest gets that age, this is something I would start him out with as well. It's a really good approach, but it's a deeper level of math. So that went really well, we switched to that. Now for my oldest, when she came home for third grade at home from the public school system, she had some pretty significant math anxiety and gaps and different things like that. And one of the things I toyed with trying was teaching textbooks. I think that's really popular in the homeschool community. And I think it's obviously popular because it's very little parent involvement. And I think that's appealing to a lot of us because we have a lot of that, our own math baggage where we just don't think we're equipped to teach it or we, somewhere along the way, we're told we're not good at math by either you know a teacher or a parent, not directly, but just given along our journey, math journey, that we were not good at it. So I think it's very appealing because it's somebody else is teaching the lesson, it's all computerized, you don't have to do anything, it's very hands off. But I think the negative with that is, and I did try teaching textbooks with my daughter. I had her try the trial version. She did not like it at all. And at first I couldn't figure out why, but I read this book. And again, I think I have a full review of this book as well. I think this book is amazing, especially with us as educators having that feeling like we're not prepared or we had a bad math experience. This goes into the science of how your brain works, how you learn. It goes into pretty much the main point is the difference between having a growth mindset with math and having a fixed mindset and how that can change things. But what didn't work with teaching textbooks was that it was not a dialogue. It was not a discussion you could have with math because you have a person on a video telling you what to do and then you do those set of problems based on what they taught. And I think there's two main problems with that. It leads to this idea that math is just an equation, a set of numbers, something you're supposed to figure out the answer for and there's one way to do that. And the problem with that is, especially when we talk about things like math facts, it's often thought like addition times tables, things like that we are often memorized, but there's no conceptual thinking behind it. We don't understand necessarily what those things mean. Yes, our child can tell us what five times four is, but they can't tell us what it actually means. And I think a lot of programs like that kind of rely on that tactic of memorization. And the problem with having just straight up memorization is twofold. Your child's going to Think they're not good at math if they can't recall these facts at a quick pace or if it's a, some kind of timed test or whatever it is in math you're gauged on whether or not you know this information by whether or not you can regurgitate the answer not whether or not you understand it but whether or not you can regurgitate the correct answer and I think that's a big problem the other thought of that is that math is just an equation that you're looking for an answer but it's completely missing the point of the beauty of math. And this book actually goes into it about how 
math is not just a set of numbers, but it's a pattern. You're looking for the pattern. You're like trying to solve a mystery. And that's so much more engaging for a child than here's, you know, 10 times six, figure it out. Or it's, we're looking at math the wrong way, I think, especially in things like public school systems, where it's just drill, do the information and that. And I think that's the reason my daughter had such difficulties with teaching textbooks and why she didn't like it because there was no discussion based because you can look at a math problem. We can get five different people to look at the same math problem and they'll see it differently because guess what? Our brains work differently. So sometimes when we are doing math problems, you know, a big thing is I'll ask, how do you see this problem? Because she will see things differently than I will see things based on experience and just how her brain works. I think that's a wonderful concept that we're missing that having this open dialogue, being able to talk about what you don't get. You can't do that with a computer screen. Yeah, and most of the time it's you're taught a concept and then you practice that concept. Well, guess what? There's more than one way to do something, which led us to the curriculum that has worked really well for us, which is Dimensions Math. And I know a lot of people are hesitant with this because, again, looking at the components to it it is it seems more intense but I swear it gets easier once you learn how to use it I remember when I first got it <laughs> like reading over the lesson plans two or three times because I'm like what but what I really like is that it provides that number sense it provides that conceptual thinking it provides the discussion how do you see this not just this is the um method now be able to do it with all these math problems. I think this is a wonderful, wonderful program and we have done really well with it. Now my oldest has done 2A, she's working on 2B, and I recently started my youngest on um, KB. And again, it's laying that really good foundation but making sure they understand what those things mean, not just 2 plus 2 is 4. My five-year-old can tell you right now, 10 plus 10 is 20. Doesn't mean she understands what it means. <laughs> she just has heard me repeat it so many times with her older sister that she's able to say those things. So gang, we need to go deeper than that with math. And this has worked extremely well for both my children. Great number sense. Again, I have different reviews on different things. You can check out my channel. One thing we did do, because especially my Oldest had some coming from the public school system where it was just simple, like memorization of math facts. She didn't understand what those things necessarily meant and she was having a hard time moving on to higher level of math because she didn't have the basics down. She didn't have that foundation. So this is something we did try and it worked really well, both addition and subtraction facts that stick. It's using mental math strategies to understand those addition and subtraction facts. We did also try multiplication facts that stick because she was obviously working on her times tables and things like that because I was looking for different options to learn those math facts without just memorization, without just flashcards, which I think is often like, that's how I learned how my math facts were. This, I think it's a great idea. I don't think it was executed the greatest way. I think there were some tips and tricks that really do help. But overall, we got the concept pretty quickly and moved on from it. So addition, subtraction, in my opinion, were a lot better than the multiplication. I think something that Dimensions does really well and then the addition and subtraction multiplication facts that stick did really well was help because it's that conceptual thinking with math, she was able to see the relationships between things. So once she knew her addition really well, she could understand subtraction better because it's just the reverse of it. Same with, we just finished wrapping up multiplication and moving on to division. She could easily see the relationship between math or multiplication and division. So for example, 20 divided by four, she knew was five times what equals 20. She saw that relationship and it made it so much easier. I remember her saying, wow, mom, this, this was easier than I thought. It's just the reverse of it. I'm like, yes, she was able to see that 
She was able to make that connection, which I don't think you necessarily would have got if you're just memorizing facts. But like I've said in a lot of my update videos, my oldest has really excelled using dimensions because it's that conceptual math number sense looking at it in multiple different ways and allowing the children to look at it in multiple different ways but also allowing us to have a discussion about where this number comes from how does this work that one-on-one -on -one, let's figure this out together type thing and i think there's nothing wrong with saying as a parent it's hard there are concepts in her to be that are difficult for me to understand because I learned in such a different way that my brain was never wired to think of math in a conceptual way. It was, I was taught, this is the math problem, this is the way you do it, this is how you, the tools you would use. I was never taught to look at a problem and figure it out for myself. So I really appreciate that Dimensions does that and it allows us to have that conversation. So if I had any advice to you looking at math pro, uh, programs and curriculums is don't be afraid because you think you're not good at math. I would highly, highly recommend reading this book. I think it'll change the way you view math as an adult and as a teacher and give you that confidence you need to go into it because guess what? Math is a journey and it's okay if you don't know the answer, it's okay if it's confusing to you. That doesn't mean you can't teach it. It doesn't mean you're a failure. It doesn't mean you're bad at math. The opportunity, it's an opportunity to learn. A learn alongside with your child. So much of our homeschool, we talk about how it's great learning alongside our children. But when it comes to math, it freaks us out <laughs> because we think, oh my God, I can't figure out this second grade or third grade math problem. How dumb am I? Don't think of it that way. You're showing your child that failure is just an opportunity to learn. If you knew how to do it right away, you wouldn't be learning. It's something you would already know. So when you don't get something right, it's a good thing. It means you have an opportunity to learn. So definitely changing your mindset when it comes to math, I think is really important. My second piece of advice would be find math that has a good number sense that really embraces conceptual thinking with math, that approaches math as something, a puzzle, a mystery, that celebrates the beauty of math. Because the funny thing is, when you get into higher level math, you're not getting just basic equations. You're talking about being able to look at something and figure it out using many different tools. Not just that one tool you learn, but being able to pull it all together and see it and having the opportunity to see things differently. I think especially in group settings to have these open discussions to see how other people see it and be able to defend how you see it and how it works for you because that's what math is when you get in those upper, upper levels and that's why I think things like online programs aren't the best fit. And I think we choose those programs mainly because of our own personal inadequacies with math, not necessarily what's going to work best. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. But I hope this was helpful and I hope math doesn't freak you out too much. Thanks for watching.